Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. With our very special host, the head honcho himself here today, <laughs> Rubens, uh, joining us, uh, subbing for Johnny today here. I, I don't know if I, you're up to I'm going to try. Thank you. <laughs> I, got a, I got big shoes to fill today, but yeah, thank you. Johnny just jumps in and takes the mic and runs with it here. So we, we'll let you do the same here today. Who'd you bring with you today? Thank you. Yeah, we brought one of our great board members from the Orange County Hispanic Chamber, Paula Garcia Arsenal, and uh, we're going to be have a good time here talking to her. And we want to welcome all of our guests today to the Orange County Hispanic Chamber podcast, where we call our community podcast, where our community is your community. So we're very blessed to have Paula here today. She's with Chase Bank. And I'm just going to start off and just let Paula run with it and tell us a little bit about herself personally. And I'm going to get her to sit up and get a little closer. We're like in third grade here. We're going to tell Uh-oh. her to sit closer to the mic now. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Paula doesn't like to be told. It. <laughs> just right. kidding. Just kidding, Paula. Okay, well, thank you for this opportunity. First of all, I, I really appreciate it. As Ruben said, I am Paula Garcia Arsenal, and I'm with Chase Bank, and I'm their community manager. Been in this role only about eight months now. I guess I should start a little bit about myself. I like to say I'm originally from Orange County, but I did move here when I was six months old. So I was uh, born in Whittier, and then my dad got a position here with Steelcase, which was a big office furniture company, and moved here when I was six months old. And I'm proud to say in Santa Ana, and did all my schooling here in Santa Ana. Went to John Adam, and then to Valley High School, so go Falcons. So if you know that, then that kind of explains my passion about the community. And yes, I'm going to jump right into that already. But I come from a family of six, um, total four brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest, and I like to say I was the oops. I'm five years from my last brother. So if you ask them, I got everything. Absolutely got everything I wanted because I was mama's baby. So there's that. You know, I knew very young that I wanted to help the community. Um, You know, the saying, you don't know what you don't have. I didn't know we were low income. I never understood that. We had a house. My dad worked hard. My mom worked part-time and we all went to school and and we had a great life. But I knew I wanted more. Came from a family. I'm third generation. None of my siblings went to college, finished college. Uh, We all worked and we all worked hard. And that's what I thought you did. At 16, I couldn't wait to get the license and get a job. I was very fortunate to work for two companies that taught customer service and help people and that was mcdonald's in south coast plaza and yes there was a mcdonald's in south coast plaza and funny story my friend rosie felix which we all know um worked with me back then at mcdonald's i didn't know that yeah we didn't know that till probably about two years ago when we shared stories and oh my gosh that's where i knew Rosie. and then i was able to go and work at disneyland and if you know anything about me i'm a big disney fan So those were the two companies I started working at 16 because I wanted gas money. I wanted to be a a song leader in high school and I knew that was extra expenses and my brothers and sisters were all working. So I thought, let me go work. And I think that's really those two companies taught me about customers first, doing the right thing and the customer service skills. And just being in that front line of people, I started to adore people, especially at Disneyland. You got to meet people from all over the world. And it was just, as they say, magical. It was fun. And I continued to do that through college. And I went to Santa Ana College. But then I started to not like the weekends and working the churro stand until midnight and then having to clean it till two in the morning. So I thought it was time for a real job. And that's when I got into banking. I am very fortunate to be in banking for 30 years. Worked for Wells Fargo for 20 years and then had an opportunity to go into a small community bank called Farmers and Merchants Bank where I really was, I learned more about the community. I'll stop a little bit there because I stayed in the community until about 22, 23 and did what a lot of us did and started our families and moved out and went to the Inland Empire to purchase the first home. Left Orange County and then all my brothers and sisters and my dad all, we all moved to Orange, um, excuse me, to Riverside. And then I was out there for 20 years. 
worked for Wells and thought it was great and was going to stay. And then I had an opportunity to come back to Orange County in 2008. And that's where I started to come back with Farmers and Merchants Bank. And like I said, that's where I think my community and my passion started. Got involved with the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce, which I'm a board member of. And then a few years later, got involved with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and also a board member with High School Inc. Again, I don't know how deep we should go, but that's where I really said, okay, this is my opportunity. Santa Ana Chamber got me connected with High School Inc. And then the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce got me connected with the Youth Chamber. And so the youth, the passion piece of it is where I said, you know what? I need to help these students. My story we talk about and Chase kind of likes us to talk about our story is I never finished college and it's probably one of my top three regrets of life because um, I started working and I had the opportunity at 20 to start working for a bank and had great mentors and great opportunities and I followed that and going to school full-time also at Santa Ana College at night it was just too much and I gave up the college career and I've been very fortunate but as we all know that education is a huge piece and I think Actually, I should say I know. That's why I push so much for the college students and the high school program to continue the education and get that next step. Well, that's great. I mean, we know you've done a lot of different leadership roles here. In Orange County, you've been the chair of the Santa Ana Chamber. Yes. You've been on the board of the uh, Orange County Hispanic Chamber, and just your involvement just been uh, fantastic. What your role with your current role with Chase, mm-hmm. though, community manager, can you define exactly what community manager does and what's sure. what makes it kind of uh, appealing to you and compelling and what gets you up every morning uh, doing it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you, Ruben, for asking that. So I'm the community manager. I left banking after 30 years and went into the nonprofit world because I was so passionate about giving back to the community. And I was with Habitat for Humanity for five years, which taught me so much about the nonprofit world. It's one thing to volunteer which a lot of us do, but to actually be in that role and to really understand what the nonprofits go through and running it like a business on small staff and smaller budgets. I thought I was done with banking and I thought this is it. A colleague of mine, um, our chairwoman, Sylvia, gave me a call and told me about this new role with Chase and literally, quote unquote, it's our dream job. And she said, you need to find out more about this. And this is a new initiative that Chase started back in November of 2020, part of the uh, racial equity commitment that the bank needed to do our job and we had a responsibility to go out into the community and be the liaison to provide the financial health that we know is needed in our communities, that they don't either um, get that education because they don't know or they don't trust banks or they could possibly be intimidated to walk into a bank. That is my role. I'm out there as the face of the bank providing financial health workshops, um, having community conversations, providing resources, just being there as a person to help the community with, we always talk about wellness, mental wellness, but how about financial health? And as we know, it's not being taught out there, nowhere. Sure, absolutely. Well, we appreciate you being here today. And if if people are just joining us, we have Paula Garcia Arsenault with us today. She's with Chase. She's also a board member of the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And you are listening to the Orange County Hispanic Chamber podcast, where our community is your community. Tell us a little bit more about your current family, uh, your immediate family. Sure, absolutely. As I like to say, I just got remarried, and I say just um, six years ago to my Prince Charming. People might not know, I've known my husband, Mike, since kindergarten. So we went to kindergarten, um, elementary, junior high, and high school together. We're just buddies and just friends, and reconnected, of course, on Facebook. I I'm blessed with three stepchildren, and then I have my daughter. Kind of a funny story. So I have a son, Anthony, who's 30, daughter, Brandy, who's 29, my daughter, Haley, who's 26, and then I have another Haley, who is 24. So that's kind of fun. Unfortunately, my stepchildren live in Colorado, so we don't get to see them as much as we'd like. But it's fun. It's great. And somebody knew that um, I was going to have three more. So now I have a total of four children. And um, then, of course, two of my fur babies. I have a Husky and Bulldog mix, and then we just got a new Bulldog about uh, two months ago. It's fun. It's fun. And so my daughter just came back home trying to figure out some some stuff, possibly going to find her own place again, and that's okay. I love having her home. Sure. So it makes fun TV nights, reality TV nights. <laughs> well, you talked about you know why you wanted to be involved with the youth chamber and why youth is so important, education is so important. 
Um, tell us a little bit about the leadership qualities that you have that you try to convey to these younger younger people here, especially in the Orange County community. Yeah, absolutely. You know, working with the youth chamber, the, especially the college students, God, they're just amazing. They're just amazing. They're so different than when we were in school. I think having some great mentors as I grew up in my career, I always remember that's what I want to be for them. And the opportunity that we are allowing them to meet other business folks, and not just in the business world, in the education world, in the nonprofit arena, and allowing them and let us letting us guide them is just amazing. I say that the youth chamber, part of the Orange County Hispanic Chamber, is such a hidden secret still. And I think any youth out there that has the time, this is a great opportunity for them. The skills, you know, we all need to work on our soft skills, you know, um, the eye contact, the handshaking, our elevator speech. They do such a better job than even some of my own colleagues. Right. <laughs> it is amazing. And I think so many of us want to help our youth. And we want to give them that opportunity and that extra step. And that's just what it is. So what I'm teaching them and guiding them is not anything different that they're going to possibly get, but it's in a form and an arena that they can be comfortable. And they can tell us things that maybe they can't discuss with their own student friends or maybe even their family. And we become friends. We continue that relationship after they graduate. We give them the opportunity to an introduction to maybe their next or their career, I should say, not next, their career. We open doors for them. Right. Yeah, and what Paula's talking about is, uh, people don't know, is our Youth Chamber of Commerce, which has been around for 14 years. And we've had a great program for us here in Orange County. And through Paula's leadership and others, uh, we're hoping to continue to expand that. And uh, it's just been a phenomenal program. So thank you for your leadership and being part of that because it's made – a world of difference. Yeah, absolutely. If I could put a little plug, a sure. shameless plug. Absolutely. We are taking applications right now up until the 15th of August uh, for our board positions. There is no cost mm-hmm. at all. Um, no cost at all. Um, basically, you know, it's their time, but it's going to be time that's going to be worth their while. No, I agree. Absolutely. I, anytime you have a leadership opportunity as a young person or any person, take advantage of it. Absolutely. And, and this is one of those opportunities to do that. Absolutely. Let's go back to your role at Chase. Sure. What do you hope, or what was Chase's thinking? I know you kind of intimated a little bit about it, but what it, was their feeling about creating this job, yeah. this position, and what is their overall goal? And this, again, is my opinion, but when they originally created this, they were focusing more on the low and moderate income communities and um, looking more on the black and brown communities. And again, sure, that's our, my passion, and I want to do everything I can to give back to my community, but there's all kinds of need out there, all kinds of need. You know, it's not just the need. It could be where our families are paying in rent right now. Some of our families here in Orange County move to different parts of the county and might be paying 75% of their rent from right. their income. Sure. That's a need. And then they, they lack the resources for food. That was the original plan and it's still continuing. And I know um, our CEO and president has already extended that and we're going to continue this um there is 150 of us community managers in the united states 50 of us in california and only two of us in orange county so we're looking at expanding because we know we cannot do all the work of course because there is so much work to be done but i think that the point is that we all know and um, ruben you came from banking i've been in banking a long time we knew that banks had money set aside for the community but our community didn't know that And it's our job and our responsibility to be out there and educating the community on that and and educating and explaining and helping them come into the bank to find out about those resources. So continuing this initiative and if we can put a stop to or I should say a start to savings and budgeting in a family then that will just open doors for other opportunities for them. And it's not just savings and budgeting and credit. It is home ownership. It is um, helping with youth, college, and also seniors. We're also helping with the seniors community, helping them protect themselves from identity theft and scams. So yes, we will continue this initiative, provide as much help and resources that we can. Great. Do you have an example of a program you guys are currently doing? Sure. Sure. So for me, I'm out there in the community and I'm the one teaching the financial health workshops. Some examples of some of our communities that I've already helped in our organization. So I will say we do not, we help with nonprofits, houses of worship, 
neighborhood associations, and education institutions. So I personally have already worked with Dow High okay. Community Center, sure. which we, um, we know our friend Rosie Felix is very much yep. involved in, and Santa Ana was able to provide a four-series course for their parents of the families who go to the after-school program, and that was savings, budgeting, credit. I was able to help um, my former friends at Habitat for Humanity and teaching those families on credit and budgeting after purchasing a home. I'm going to currently um, start working with a couple of other nonprofits here locally, and they're nonprofits that possibly don't have the expertise on the financial piece. We work with the veterans, trying to work with a couple of veterans organizations, and as I said, the seniors, a couple of after day care programs for some seniors. Well, that's great. Yeah. Do you have a story of somebody specifically you guys have been able to help? Sure, sure. I did have an aha moment at one of these organizations where the workshop was an hour long. And then we usually keep about 15 minutes to a half an hour for questions and answers. And one of the organizations that I it was in person, we stayed an hour after because the community had so many questions about banking and the products and the trust piece. And for me, that was really the aha moment. They had never had accounts before because of possibly the culture and maybe the country that they came from, the trust and sometimes some of our banking institutions in the different countries aren't always, they could be crooked. Yeah. Just to see the light bulb go off with them based on the questions and taking the time, we even take it to the next step, Ruben, that if these families want to then come in, we will make an appointment and we will meet with them at the bank to open their account and help them with that first step. I will say that was for me was really why I'm doing this to educate and teach that community that might not have this resource. Oh, that's great. Tell us a little bit about why you chose to take a leadership position with like the Santa Ana Chamber and with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber and why and why you think it's important for you know, people like yourselves or others to be involved in the nonprofit world or and being not just in the nonprofit world, but being in leadership and taking that extra step. It's not You're not just a volunteer, but you're a high level volunteer giving your time and effort to do these type of things. Why do you think that's important? I didn't start off by wanting to take these leadership roles. And sometimes um, I get called a community leader and I step back and go, really, am I a community leader? Advocate, yes, the leader. But long story short, the Santa Ana Chamber kind of just happened by accident. Like I said, I had moved out of Orange County and went to Inland Empire when I had the opportunity in 2008 and came back. I thought to myself, you know, I've been gone 20 some years from this community. What do I do to get reacquainted? It. And I remember many years ago having managers be part of chambers. I went on the website and I saw that they were um, going to host High School Inc., the very first volunteer meeting 15 years ago. And I thought, hmm, and to find out I was at my high school where I graduated from. So that's how I got involved with the Santa Ana Chamber. And I just joined as a member and started to volunteer through High School Inc. And then I joined their ambassador program. And then when my buddy Dave Elliott, which you know very well, yep. asked me to sit on the board, I felt like it was a, a responsibility of mine to help and to give that leadership back to the, the community that I grew up in. And if I could help students, business owners, women with whatever help they needed. And I think it was shortly after, maybe three, four years, me and you met and you also offered me that opportunity. And I said, why not? You know, I am um, Hispanic and I should be helping all of the county. And that's kind of how it started. It started by accident. And I just felt like being involved and giving my time that paid forward. And I enjoy, I enjoy being with people. I enjoy learning in that sense. And it also was ha going hand in hand with my business. I was meeting people. I was getting business from people who wanted to do business with me because we were both common sense was we were working together to help. I will be honest, my circle of friends are people who are helping in the community, people from the chambers, people who really care and are passionate about the community. So I think it's just something we all should do. But yeah, I think that's kind of how it started by accident. And here I am, uh, I would say 15 years later, back in the community, giving back as much as I can. Believe it or not, our time is getting wow. close to an end, but is there anything else you'd like to convey to uh, our audience? Sure, absolutely. I would just say, um, you know, the Orange County Hispanic Chamber has opened many doors, many friendships, has helped me grow tremendously. So if you're listening to this, I would say, you know, take a look at our website, 
come to one of our events, join. If you have a student at home, have them look into the youth chamber and just want to say, you know, thank you so much for this opportunity. And if somebody could use any of my resources through my full-time job, we tease a lot of time that um, we, our full-time job is always volunteering and helping, but I'd love to do whatever I can for the community and they can just uh, reach out to, to me or they can reach out to the um, chamber. But thank you. Please thank our guest, Paula Garcia Arsenault, for being here today from Chase Bank. And uh, we appreciate your leadership. For people who want to get involved with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber, please visit our website at ochcc.com. We have all the great information there. We also have a small business development center where we offer services to all of our businesses for no cost thanks to a lot of the grants that we get so once again thank you for joining uh, our community podcast powered by the orange county hispanic chamber where our community is your community we will see you all next week well there you have it another great reason to tune in each and every time to meet our community the hispanic business community here in orange county Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Feel Applied Innovation Center. 